much awaited cake break. Uh, it's Dr. Karen Sursum, University of Massachusetts, who is talking again about the flora of Franklin County. Well, thank you. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the historic flora of Franklin County, not the flora that we're actually working on. Um, and the flora was dates between 1811 and up to 1990. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the collection pattern and a few of the collectors. Uh, Franklin County, as you've heard this morning, is in uh, western Massachusetts, a little bit uh, west of Worcester County, between Worcester and Berkshire County, just north of us here in Amherst. And the historic flora, and I wish that we had all of these portals available and all of the HMC stuff had been done, but uh, the historic flora is based on about 14,800 specimens not including duplicate specimens, uh, from eight herbaria. And they were collected by 512 collectors or collecting teams. And botanists like to collect in groups and in combinations of groups. Uh, this is a slide that shows the number of specimens collected by decade. And as you can see, there's a peak in the 30s. But a very broad peak between 1900 and 1930, this is World War II. But then another peak in the 50s through the 1980s. And then two very early peaks, one before 1820 and one in the 1870s. And this is also color-coded by group or institution for the major collectors. So a lot of collectors were independents. These early ones mostly were physicians, a few clergymen. Uh, these are unaffiliated independent collectors, and we'll come to this one later. Uh, by about 1850, Amherst College comes in, and they did a lot of work in the 30s, late 20s and 30s. Uh, UMass started in 1867, and its presence is felt particularly as time went on. This is NABC's collection. Again, early, before 1900, and then huge in the 20s and into the 30s, a few recently. Uh, Smith College, figures in, starting 1920. This is Wayne Manning, who unfortunately I won't be able to talk about, but he was a major collector. Continues on, these are uh, various people at Smith College. And then this <laughs> is NEDC, mostly Bruce Story. So a lot of collectors, uh, and I'm going to mostly concentrate on the major collection themes. The first, this is the collection by date for each town, grouped by 20-year uh, intervals. The early, oops, sorry. The earliest collection was 1818 in Deerfield, by 1819 in Greenfield, and 1819 in Holly. And that's the work of Jacob Porter, who is a physician botanist in the town of Plainsfield. So these really early collections just reflected where the people lived. Uh, by the 1820s and into the 1830s, this bottom tier down here, this and Conway represented the collection efforts primarily of uh, uh, Dennis Cooley and people associated with the early flora, first flora of Franklin County. This is uh, Edward Jarvis, who contributed to the state cabinet. He was a physician in Northfield. Uh, the next sort of color range is associated with uh, Tuckerman's collection efforts or efforts centered in the 70s. Uh, obviously, these are some of these are NEBC. This was NEBC 1915. The last town collected was Leyden in 1926, and that was by some people from UMass. So there's no super pattern. It just reflects people's interests in what they were doing. But a third of the towns were collected by 1830, which is pretty early. OK, starting about some of the collectors. The earliest collectors prior to 1800 were a tri trio from Deerfield, Dennis Cooley, Edward Hitchcock, and Stephen West Williams. Hitchcock is very well known. He was uh, a minister. Uh, he, at the time, at this particular time, he was a principal of Deerfield Academy. He subsequently moved to Amherst College and was very well known primarily as a geologist. Dennis Cooley and Stephen West Williams were physicians in Deerfield. Dennis Cooley left Deerfield in about 1822 
because he was a better botanist than physicians and the people didn't like him. <laughs> uh, he then went to Georgia and ended up in Michigan where he was a very active collector and his collection by yeoman effort from Robert Burton uh, is at the Michigan State University integrated completely with their collection because he was from Michigan. Uh, Stephen West Williams was an extremely well-known physician from Deerfield. He was one of these people who went around gave lectures at various colleges about botany. His particular interest was in medicinal plants. But uh, in the 1816, 1817, 1818 period, 1818 period, he collected with uh, Hitchcock and Cooley and his specimens uh, survived. So this is a picture of his best uh, collection. Oops. Too many buttons. This is too many buttons. This is his herbarium, and this map that we're having a look at it. It was collected between 1816 and 1818, most likely 1817. This is a page from his herbarium, and Matt and I spent quite a bit of time looking through it. It's about 547 specimens altogether. And they're beautifully mounted um, with a name, common name, usually common name, and uh, scientific name. A herbarium like the West William Herbarium is of no particular use unless you know who collected it and where it, where it was collected and what time it was collected. And fortunately, we were, uh, we've been able to figure that out, not us, but others at, at uh, Deerfield Library and largely because of this book called Botanical Descriptions, Medicinal, Culinary, and Other Uses of Plants in the first volume of My American Herbarium, principally compiled from the latest, most approved writers on botany and materia medica by Stephen West Williams. And the uh, year is 1817. And this bottom thing here says, uh, seek science in a vote. But what allowed you to relate this book to the, the herbarium, and this was the critical piece of sleuthing, was that he had an index, a Latin index of Latin names and an index of common names. Here's his handwriting, which is difficult to read. But this is the page in his um, descriptions, which he talks about the uses of the plant medicinal. He has some discussions. Not too much of interest to a botanist who wants to know where it's growing, but a lot of information. And then this is the page in his herbarium. So as soon as they had that number, they called up Roberta Poland, who had the, the thing that was in the Deerfield Library. They realized what it was, so they had a date. He says by later resources that it was all collected in Deerfield. And it gives the date. So we now have beautiful documentation for a very early floor of Deerfield. And importantly, it provides ex good documentation for Hitchcock's, one of the earliest floors of this area, which was published in 1829, which has about 900 and uh, close to 1,000 vascular plants mentioned in it. And there are very few vouchers for this. Hitchcock writes about losing his specimens to bugs and hoping that Cooley has the documentation. Cooley's specimens are in Michigan. Uh, some of them say Deerfield, some of them have a date, some of them have a date but no location. So the, there are 360 taxa in the Williams Herbarium that are in Hitchcock's Herbarium. So this is now a voucher for this very early um, floor. Okay, so moving on to the 1870s, a lot of activity was centered around Amherst College and Edward Tuckerman. Tuckerman was primarily a lichenologist. He's the man from whom Tuckerman's ravine, ravine on the White Mountains was named. And while he was at uh, Amherst College, he was working on a revision of Hitchcock's flora. So there was a, a lot of floristic activity at the time. Some of the people involved with this floristic activity were William S. Clark, who was at Amherst College for a while, became president of the University of Massachusetts in 1867, and he went out on walks with people almost every weekend. Uh, another person of, of interest, he didn't collect too many specimens from Franklin County, but this is Maria L. Owen, who is known for her early flora of Nantucket Island. But she was instrumental, she lived in Springfield, Massachusetts, and she was instrumental in forming the Connecticut Valley Botanical Society in 
1873. Their first meeting was in Amherst, and the first president was somebody that I'm going to mention in just a minute, Henry uh, Griswold Jessup. But she talks in other papers about going and visiting Mount Toby, and she published some years later a list of firms on Mount Toby. Another interesting early collector was Elizabeth H. Perry from Conway. She was an instructor at Mount Holyoke College, and she worked with Lydia Shattuck, who was a very well-known botanist at the time. Lydia Shattuck was a member of the Connecticut Valley Botanical Society. But uh, Elizabeth H. Perry had the mistake to get married. <laughs> so when that happens at Mount Holyoke Seminary at the time, he had to leave. And so she left and went up to Conway, where her husband was, and a few years later started a school. And I think while she was a school teacher there, she built a herbarium of about 150, 160 specimens, and this is one of them. Unfortunately, the, type, the name of the specimen and the years and the town are missing. You can see it, but you can't. It's faded out. So again, this is beautiful early documentation of the flora of um, Conway. Yes. But the biggest collector from this period of the 1870s was Henry Griswold Jessup. He had gotten his education at uh, Yale, became an ordained minister for, and was a minister for several years and then left and came to the Amherst area about 1864, 65, thereabouts, for his health. And he immediately got involved in a lot of collections activities, as I said, centered around Amherst College. Some of his very earliest specimens uh, included the splenium cladi neuron and Phagopterus connectinus, which he collected on Mount Toby. But he collected 376 specimens from Franklin County alone between 1864 and 1875. In 1876, he taught very briefly at Smith College and then went on to become a professor at Dartmouth College, where he stayed until his retirement. So he was a very important collector. Uh, the, period, the peak of collection started about 1900, and they were in some of the very early members of NEBC were collectors during this period. One of them that I could find a photograph was R.A. Ware. Um, the Forbes brothers or cousins from um, Buckland and Ray Ethan Torrey from uh, UMass. But the important thing in that period was the field days of the New England Botanic Club. And if you read the description in Rodora about going out into the field, I'll say the second field trip of the club will be Saturday, May 11th through the center of Greenfield. The party will leave Boston at night, 619, reaching Greenfield at 923. Can't do much better than that in the car. <laughs> uh, they, they proposed to take trolley lines and railroads to the collecting sites, and they collected every plant, were enjoying to collect every plant recogni in recognizable condition. It's not necessary that the collectors determine the material. After pressing and drying the plants, send them to the curators, and uh, they will be labels will be provided. And one of the collection teams was Mayor uh, Lyndon Fernald and uh, Bayard Long. So the New England Botanic Club collected two, two, over 200,000 specimens on a series of four field trips, and this is one of their pre-formed labels. Lisa, are you going to do this for your, your field trips? Yes. Yes. Okay. In the 1930s, uh, collection efforts shifted to Amherst College and centered around Alfred S. Goodell and Arthur S. Pease. Pease is well known to NEBC. He did the flora of uh, New Hampshire. No, White Mountains. Coas County. Thank you. Coas okay. County. And then um, the one that's less well known is Alfred S. Goodell. And this is a picture of Goodell. Oops. Here. This is uh, C.A. Weatherby and Gus Griscom setting out on a field expedition with a plant press and a basculum. Mm -hmm. And uh, Goodale with uh, stu uh, uh, students and a uh, plant manager of the, the campus grounds crew, Walter Market, drove around to all 26 towns, probably in a car like that, and including the uh, Connecticut River Valley. Okay, some of the regional collectors are faces you recognize, Marjorie Holland, Mary Wilhelm, Harry Hollis, Bruce Sorry, 
And the biggest collections of all were Roberta Coleman, uh, who collected between 1944 and 1988, primarily in Deerfield, Massachusetts. Uh, she collected things that are a little hard to find, like the Trichiometric Carifolium. She collected invasive plants as they became invasive. And on one of her collections of Eliagnus umbilata, she has, I hope it's umbilata, <laughs> because she was looking for that. She also commented that many plants that were present in Deerfield in the 50s have been wiped out by buildings, roads, and other improvements. Mm -hmm. So we thank, oh, I should say, sorry, that she collected something over 3,000 specimens in Deerfield. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we thank a lot of the collectors who were professional students and amateurs who shared their passion for botany and certainly they like to collect in groups. But the importantly, that they took the time to make a specimen and deposit it in a herbarium or otherwise safe place. And special thanks to David Boss at the Flint Library and Historic Deerfield, Ruth Parnell for giving the uh, Perry collection to UMass, uh, Aria Tall who helps search the records, and then to the curators of the herbarium. collection has a lot of medicinal plants in them, plants that were actually cultivated. Uh, Roberta Poland's collection has huge numbers of batrichiums that you don't find today. Ophioglossum was very common. So we're just now beginning to look at that aspect of things, which, which species have changed over the period of time. But no, um, I think people, there are a lot of ferns in there because people like to collect at Mount Toby, and ferns is very rich. Ferns are very rich on Mount Toby. But no, people like today, they would go out and collect uh, you know, a, this representative sample of, of what was, was out there. I'm not sure if that answered your question. Well, sort of. So um, you might say that because of the abundance of moonworts that forest soils at the time were considerably richer maybe than they are now, at least in certain pockets in Franklin County. Yeah, That's the kind of thing I'm getting at. OK, before. well, certainly in Deerfield, in the, in the 40s, 50s, and into 60s. And Roberta Poland didn't really start collecting massively until about 18, 1968, when she retired. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of the small patricians, moonworts, which we have hardly found any, maybe one or two. But they were just all over the place. Mm -hmm. Ophioglossum pusillum was collected uh, in uh, before 1820, it's in their very early herbaria, and she also collected it. So there's some things that, that we're just not finding. Orchids, again, uh, although a lot of the early collectors did not particularly collect orchids. They, again, they were interested in ferns and other kinds of things. I'll take one more question. Okay. Thank you.